Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. That guy's Tim. This is Second Legacy, and thank you for stopping by. Today, we've got to talk about a pretty serious topic. we got to talk about suicide. So in this video, if you are someone who has little ears watching or someone sensitive to that topic, just be aware. We are going to talk about some things that are pretty serious, but it needs to be addressed because the way in which it's being brought up directly correlates to our gun rights versus gun control fight. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Fair warning. But thank you so much in advance for taking the, the uh, appropriate considerations on this. Now, if you guys are enjoying this content, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. And this content is brought to you by Ammo Squared. We're going to say a quick word and then jump right to this. And the content today is brought to you by a sponsor, Ammo Squared. Now, this is such an interesting idea, guys. We're talking about retirement, retirement accounts for your ammo. It's a thing. This is something you guys definitely at least look at if you're interested. So what's really cool about it is you can tell ammo squared what type of ammunition you want and it'll automatically purchase that ammunition throughout the month you can also sell the ammunition back if you don't want it or you can just say send it to me now and they'll hold it for you they'll store it for free and they'll ship it to you whenever you request it there's so many cool features about this service you really need to check them out at ammo squared.com and we want to thank them for sponsoring today's video all right tim listen this one this one is not fun to talk about but it we really need to yeah i mean Gonna gonna be honest. Yeah, I mean, when you're talking about suicide, you know, uh, the vast majority of gun violence is self-inflicted. People killing themselves. Correct. And for years, the anti-gunners have tried to use this. They're saying that it, it, that it's overlooked or something like that. Is it really? Because it, it comes up all the time, and they use it to say, well, "This is why we need to get rid of guns." Because if they didn't have access to guns, Davy Hogg Correct. just said this a week ago. If if yeah, if 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 we got rid of the guns, then we could reduce suicides. Well, no. Have you ever heard of the, the suicide forest forest in Japan, where even sharp right, objects right. are banned for Doesn't the most work. part? Uh, yeah. So you you have to address other things. Let's, let's let's get into the article and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, right. So the reason that I want to bring this up is this is from a major network. This is NPR, and NPR is a gun controlling network. Like they they are fully versed in gun, control. and they're about to lose but their funding. Interesting, yeah. Because of it. And they're about to lose their funding. Correct. And what's so interesting about this is gun control in general does not talk about this because it undermines their point. And that's why I bring this up. Because if the entire point of the gun control movement is to save lives, then why are they not talking about the biggest proportion of the lives lost? They're only talking about the ones that would lead to gun control. It's a predetermined desired outcome. And it's manipulating the people's emotions in order to steal their rights from them. Okay. That's why I, this really bothers me. Let's get to the article. Like you said, though, suicides make up majority of gun deaths, but remained overlooked in the gun violence debate. Now this came out yesterday. Why would a network or an outlet start drawing a direct attention to the fact that suicides were a majority of what they call gun violence when they've only pushed for gun control over the past four years ad nauseum, Tim. Yeah, I mean, that's, they focus on the AR-15. Like, why? And, 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 you know, the FBI statistics, when we're talking about assault weapons, uh, FBI statistics tell us that less than 500 rifles of any type are misused in crime every year in the United States. Yep. So that means maybe 100 AR-15s are used. It is a, beyond a statistical zero. You're, you're more likely to be struck by lightning than to be killed by some right. rogue AR-15 lurking in the bushes waiting to get you. So right. it, it, this this is this is what the gun controllers focus on because they know if they can get a foothold there using that argument, selecting that what used to be a smaller percent of the population 30 years ago, now the AR-15 is the most commonly sold rifle in the United most States. Common. So they're having yep. a harder time selling this one. But that's what they focus mm -hmm. on because they still see that as low-hanging fruit. And then once they get the assault weapons ban they want, then they move on to handguns and they move on to knives and they move on to anything else they can grab on. Just keeps on right. going, just keeps on chopping just like a tree. But listen to this, Tim. I think this is the language that they use. They don't even dance around this in this article. And this is what I found so fascinating. When gun violence in America is discussed, people typically think about mass shootings, homicides, or even domestic violence. But in fact, the majority of gun related deaths in the United States are suicide. So right there, I just want to, I want to draw some very important distinctions because we live in this guys. If you're watching this video, the words that they use are very important. They they always use specific language when they're going on offense and specific language when they're going on defense. What they just said right there, but in fact, the majority of gun-related deaths in the United States are suicide. Normally, they would say that's gun violence. Yeah. They, they don't usually say gun-related deaths because that implies that it has something else to do with the gun. Normally, they say 
gun violence caused this because it's all about the gun. But this, it's well, it's related. Right. I mean, gun related. Like, there are differences. Right. Correct. Right. And even they go further in 2023, over half of those deaths were suicides. Again, Tim, I ask the question to you and anyone watching. If you're trying to save lives and your whole stated mission is just reducing the impact of what you call common sense and gun violence, why would you not focus on the biggest proportion that could be utilized to impact your stated goal? Well, here is one issue. So we know that the anti-gunners purposely steer away from the conversation of handguns because just like suicides, mm -hmm. handguns are the most commonly used firearms in crime. It's not AR-15s. It's not rifles of any type. It's not even shotguns. It's not machine guns. It's handguns. Okay. Okay. But they don't want to talk about that because most Americans do not want them coming after handguns. So they have to steer Correct. away from that. But this ties into suicides because people aren't shooting themselves with rifles. Generally, they're no. doing it with handguns. So this is why these two topics are taboo, because it kind of goes against the grain of what they're trying to push. Exactly. And so that's exactly yep. right. Anyway. That's no, that's that's exactly right. And again, it's not to be insensitive to the topic. We don't want any of these things to happen. No, I mean, the, I, the I had idea. a close friend commit suicide with a firearm. I also had another friend commit suicide by hanging himself in his garage. So, I, you know, suicide is no stranger to me. Um, it, it has affected me and touched me, myself and my friends and my family. But I don't go out blaming the gun because they were suicidal. That isn't why they died. Right. And it's just, it, it's, it's so crappy because you don't want this to happen to anybody. And there are always ways to move forward. It's, you just have to find and reach out for it. But and I don't pretend to be an expert, but the thing is when you ignore suicide as a very serious topic and you only go after what is very obviously gang crime and repeat offenders and recidivism rates, and you use that to push your gun control, but you ignore the people that can be reached and help the most. To me, it's kind of like you're, you're sacrificing the largest proportion of people you can truly help for the goal that you want. And through gun control. And that and that's a very clear distinction. You have to understand that. Yeah. It's just, it's it's really crappy. And some people in my video, when I covered this topic on my channel, they said it was all about setting up red flag laws, which it totally, it could totally be something of that nature. Well, um, they will factor into this. I don't know, Absolutely. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. But listen, listen to this, though. This is, I think this is absolutely fascinating. I'm going to jump right to, um, to the last one here, because... We've kind of covered the, the middle one. This is a psychiatrist. Quote, most suicide att attempts in the U.S. are by overdose or poisoning things like sleeping pills or Tylenol or, or opiates. And yet those are usually non-fatal. Only about 2% of people that make an attempt to, by overdose die. But firearms, which are only used in 5 or 6% of attempts, are so lethal that if you have access to a firearm, when that impulse comes, you use that firearm, the chances of death is 90%. Now, here's the thing that stood out to me in that. The gun controllers, when they even mention suicide, which is very rare, they say that if the guns didn't exist, we could stop all this. But these suicides, 5 to 6%. Yeah. Tim, that, that's, that's infinitesimal. Yeah. And look, again, I don't want to be insensitive here because, again, suicide has touched me and my family and my friends. But I also had people I knew in high school that were cutters that would, would take sleeping pills. They weren't really trying to kill themselves. They were, they're crying out for help. They wanted somebody crying to notice them. And that's why they choose or they chose to use, you know, a drug or they chose to shallowly cut their own wrist. Right. Um, if, if they truly wanted to die, they would jump off a building. They would, you know, there's other ways that you could, you can die and, and reduce the chances of you surviving the attempt. Many times before somebody gets to suicide, they'll shout out, they'll cry out for help. And that's why if you're, if you have somebody in your family or your circle of friends that is, is saying things that, that may lead you to think they might want be interested in self-harm or they, they make an attempt like that. They, they, they reach out, they cry out for that help. Please pay attention to them, get them the help they need. Right. But again, this is disingenuous what they're saying here, because people will try other means for that, that cry out for assistance or for help. And I don't think you can, you can make this distinction they're trying to make in this last paragraph. No, I, I don't think that you can make the distinction either, but that's, but that's the whole point. It's you're, you're going into a realm of taking the rights away from an entire population 
because of a subset of a population that need help. They don't need less rights. Right. That that's that's the point. Like the population in general, we don't need to get rid of our gun rights because criminal elements on the homicide side of the chart or graph, because the homicide elements, hey, knock knock, let's just arrest them and maybe keep them there. Right. It'd be pretty straightforward, right? On the suicide side of that, devote assets to help them and make that part of your national campaigns instead of just doing passive aggressive text or tweets or all the time about how bad guns right. are. We're going to help maybe you by taking your rights away. That help, should make you feel better. Right. Maybe help people and talk about something that can actually be effectual, effectual for reducing the impact of suicide in the nation. Right. Even though it's your part of your stated goal. I, it just sits wrong with it you, does. man. It's just, and, it's so twisted. And here's another aspect that they're not talking about. You know, we just came out of 20 years of war. We have a lot of military veterans and historically speaking, military veterans mm-hmm. that have had been exposed to combat, they have a higher likelihood of committing suicide. They, they saw and did things and, 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 and stuff went on that negatively affects them for the rest of their life. And many times they just Correct. want out. They'll become alcoholics. They may drink themselves to death. They may commit suicide other ways. And, and the government is, is in this instance has elevated the, the likelihood of suicide in a large portion of the population, yet they're not reaching out to help them. And the VA is horrible. And so, mm-hmm. you know, they don't want to have that conversation. We're going to see for the next quite a few years, as these military veterans become of age, many, many of them are going to, I hope not many, but they are going to have, we're going to have a higher instance of suicide in the United States. And we're not going to address that by banning guns. Okay. We're going to address Correct. that by helping those veterans and helping those struggling that aren't, may not, may not even be veterans. But what I'm saying is, is we're, we're coming into yeah. a period because we're coming out 20 years of war where suicides are going to be on the uptick because of the large number, millions of veterans that served in those 20, 20 years. And so, well, we're already seeing that in the data. We it's are already starting to show up. We are. And, mm-hmm. and that's why we have to be vigilant in helping people, banning them and taking their rights away. Isn't going to help them. This is this no, this this is nonsensical what they're trying to do here. They're using suicides as a political tool to get something they want, or they're trying to with this article. Or or they're or they're ignoring it. Or they're so, ignoring it. And and what I'm yeah, saying so is So it's either ignoring or manipulating. Yeah, allocate resources and funds, and it's incumbent upon all of us to listen to those in our, our circle of friends and family to help them, but we need to do something to address suicide and taking rights away well, isn't that something. Look back look back about two or three months ago. We covered it. We talked about the fact that they were trying to take the gun rights away from veterans because they couldn't balance their checkbooks. Right. You remember that? Yeah. And then, and then the Republicans finally got that removed. Right. But I mean, that that's, that's indicative of instead of going after the actual problem, they're trying to take rights away from people as the solution. And that's just not the answer. Right. It's just, if somebody is depressed it, it really and you is kick in stark. their door and take their guns away from them, do you really think you're helping them? It's, it's like, I don't know, man. It, it just, it, the anti-gunners will try anything and do anything. They, they really are classless pieces of human excrement. I just get so sick of them. You know, this is a very serious subject and something that's very close to me. And to see them trying to politicize it and use it to take rights away, cl- claiming that guns are the problem is just infuriating to me. And so. Yeah, it is. Anyway. I mean, it's, it's a heartbreaking topic. It is. It's tough. Veteran, some of the film, like the tweets and the videos that veterans have put out like being upset. There was one of a guy in a car who was literally just crying. I know which about one you're talking about. The same stuff yeah. by, by switching over and over and over different providers. Dude, it's just, yeah, it's heart wrenching. And this type of it noise sucks. for political gain isn't helping those suffering. It just isn't. And, and, and you're not going to lower suicides by attempting this nonsense. So anyway, um, yeah. If folks, if, if you're struggling with depression or something like that, please seek help. Reach out to a family member or a friend. Uh, it's important. You are important. Thank you for watching Second Legacy, and we'll talk to you soon.